bureaucracies please their own internal hierarchy. Market-driven systems please the customer. Totally different models. And so an effective executive gets up every morning and says, what am I going to do this week that makes a difference? How am I going to be more effective outside my activities? How is my company, my bureaucracy, my business, my museum, my zoo, you know, my, my house of representatives, how are we going to serve out there better? And then you want to clean up inside. You want to be more efficient so you can be more effective. But there's a big difference. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right things. It's better to do the right things inefficiently than to do the wrong things efficiently. Again, one of the places where bureaucracies die. So you focus outward. And the third one, and this I mentioned the other, the other, last week, but I want to come back to it because it's so important and it is so opposite of the, of the uh, discontinuities culture. The, you build on strengths. You do not build on weaknesses. Remember I, I showed you last week? These are mountains. If you're going to have mountains, you're going to have valleys. You, can't, you get a strong personality, they're going to have big weaknesses. What you want to do is find a way to balance them so that you get this strength and then you find out what this weakness is and you get a strength that fits this weakness. So your team is very strong because somebody in the team has a strength for each thing you need. But what you don't try to do is get that well-rounded, dull person who's here. And look at modern human resource management and look at schools and look at the way we normally think about things in big systems. What do we look for? The person who doesn't make waves, the person who's not disruptive, the person who goes along to get along, to use Sam Rayburn's phrase. That's not leadership. Leadership requires mountains. And so when you look around, when you try to recruit, you've got to say, what are you good at? What are your strengths? Some people's strength is they're brilliant. Other people have the strength that they work very, very hard. Other people have the strength that they're able to look out and they're able to, to organize other people. So while they may not be very brilliant or work very hard, they get so much out of the collective team that it all works. But notice how different this model is. This is a model that says, and by the way, this is particularly true of young males. You get an A, you get an F. Very common for very, very strong young males to do very well at the things they like and do very badly at the things they don't like. It's just very common. I'm not going to make any more comments about hunting, but it's very common. <laughs> and yet you have a society which very often will say, well, First of all, do you really want to reward strengths? I mean, won't that make people feel bad who have weaknesses? Is it really appropriate to have people who do as well as they can do? Secondly, how comfortable are you with somebody who comes in and you say, they're a genius. They're also a pain in the neck. Are you really prepared to manage that level of diversity? And yet, Drucker's argument is that great, very effective executives are very, very good at spotting, recruiting, and nurturing strength. And will tolerate a lot of weakness in order to get the strength around them. The fourth point, which has been an enormous help to me, is the argument that effective executives focus or concentrate on the few main areas that are decisive. You know, if you think about it in that sense, the contract is a management tool. It gave us something to talk about that focused the debate. Whether you liked it or you didn't like it, it sounded positive, it did exist, you know, it was in print, and so it focused what we're doing. It's given us a focus for 100 days. So you say to me, what are we doing? We're doing the contract. I mean, it makes my job easy. I just delegate the contract to Dick Armand, and he has to now figure out how to get it all done. But then but it makes his job easy because he walks into the conference and says to all the committee chairmen, guess what we're doing in the next 100 days, guys? They all have the same document. So then they go to their committees and they say, guess what our committee's job is for the next 100 days? So in a sense, you've now focused everybody on one goal. So you've now brought together 230 members and 6,000 staff on one goal. 
And what, what great leaders do, very, and greater and effective executives do, is they figure out, out of all these possibilities, which ones are central to their game. And they then magically focus in on their game. Whatever it is. This is their assignment for the near future. This is what the, they don't pay attention up here, and they don't pay attention down here. And so what they do is they work back from the marketplace and they work back from their goals. What is it they want to accomplish? They think through their vision, they think through their strategies, and then they say, what are the two or three decisive points? Never more than five. Never more than five. No human being can manage more than five decisive points. You can have three and get two of them done and add two more. And you can do that the rest of your life. But you cannot at one time handle more than five things. It is impossible psychologically. 